So the Chronic comes out. Ruthless Records sort of had a resurgence with Bone Thugs and Harmony. Uh, yeah. That did well. And then Easy got sick. Right. Well, Easy, like, like the two, like, like when we did the deal with Relativity, the two biggest records we had was the Bone record and Above the Law Uncle Sam's Curse. Those were the two biggest records we had, you know, at the time. And then, and at it, and, and, and right then, that's when the whole demise came about, you know, him getting sick and, you know, that's when it was going there. We was making a resurgence because we just made a big deal um, with, with, um, with um, Relativity and things were going smooth. We was back in stride, you know. So, and, and, and the great thing, I think the great thing about that people don't know and people will see in the film, which is true to the film, is that when he did meet, he did meet Ice Cube and um, he was, he, he did talk to Dre because when he got back from New York from meeting with Ice Cube, he met me at my studio because we was um, putting together a California video for Above the Law and we were going over like the budgets and everything and he was like, because at that time I was managing Above the Law. And um, he was like, well, okay, we want to do this, we want to do that. I said, well, you know, what's going on, you know, with the label and everything? And I was like, well, you know, um, he said, you know, I talked to Cube and, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk to Dre. And uh, we're thinking about putting N.W.A. back together. So, you know, we want everybody to just be on point and, 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 uh, and be ready to roll, you know, next year. And, and Dre agreed to do it also. Yeah, I mean, he said, he said, I, he I was at the point when he first got f back from New York and was going to talk to Dre, so I know he talked okay. to him because he told me that he was going to talk to him. Okay. Um, and uh, that was his plans, you know, because he wanted to, um, with, with, with us having a resurgence and then Dre kind of, because that's kind of like when Death Row was about to taper off, you know, it's about to be like some, cr you know, you can kind of, you know, with all the stuff that was swirling around at that point, he was like, you know, it's like, well, you think you do? He's like, yeah, I think so, you know, and, and, and it's hard. He just felt that way, but Unfortunately, he got really sick. You know. Did you see it coming at all? Was he? You know how they kind of show him coughing and, and everything else like that, or not really? Not really. I mean, because he always was kind of coughy and weaselly because he had you know, know some kind of like bronchial problem or something. Okay. You know, all this whole. As long as I known him, the years I known him was always like kind of like, you know, certain times of the year. And, and this had to be this. This was probably later that it was in the winter. I want to say when he had got back from New York or something like that. And he, I was like, you know, but shoot, we. We rolled up, <laughs> blew, a, blew a couple. He seemed normal to me. He okay. wasn't coughing crazy or didn't look sick to me. Looked pretty solid to me. But, you know, hey, I guess you never know. I mean, but I didn't see any signs. Okay. You know, and I hung out with Easy a lot, like, far as, like, you know, on a regular. Like, I mean, me, him, KMG, rest in peace. And Jada Pinkett had a, um, a meeting about California because she was going to direct the California video for Above the Law. Oh, okay. At, um, Interesting. Yeah, at um, House of Blues. And we had lunch there. And um, he didn't really sing. I mean, it's normal to me. I mean, <laughs> and this was leading up to the whole when he really got, you know, really took ill. You know? Well, before he took ill, mm -hmm. how wild was easy? Because I, oh, I, I remember, I remember Michelle A., I think, was talking about how she had to meet him at his house. And mm -hmm. she got there early and she would just see just a an army of women walking in and out of his house. Well, my favorite funniest story was when he lived in this house. He had this house. I shot my video, um, keep watching at his house. It was a beautiful home on a cul-de-sac and everything. And we get there and there's like, before we get to set up, cause you know we had to go in and get ready. And like all these girls are coming out one by one. You know, I'm sitting in the car and I'm just watching them. Come. And I'm thinking, was he shooting a video? Or what's going on in there? No, he was just clearing up the house for us to go in. <laughs> I swear I must have counted seven. Seven girls. I was like, there's one, two, three, four beautiful women. Yeah. yeah. Women love easy and he loved women. I can yeah. tell you that. You know, the wet and wild party was something else. Uh, how many kids did easy have? Oh, man. Uh, what is it? Uh, seven, eight? Seven, eight. Yeah, something, something like that. Something that's, something what, that's what I heard. Yeah. A lot of kids. A lot of kids. Yeah. The wet and wild party was something yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah, he, and, and, and on the road, yeah, it was something else. I yeah. mean, he was a wild, I mean, he was a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, how many women did you see Easy with at one time? Like, what, what was the the most you've seen? Oh, man, shit. I mean, it's been a couple. 
<laughs> it's been a couple. I okay. mean, you know, you could you could go in a certain room in this house and walk into an orgy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So oh he, no. He, he, I mean, he, you know, bone to bone. You know, he. You know, we keep it real one hundred. You know, he he was on that pussy, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, Easy is diagnosed with AIDS. Mm -hmm. Right. How did you feel when you heard? I was crushed. Crushed. I was crushed. You know, and Dude. not because of, just because when that when we got the information, I think we was on we was on the road, we was on the road promoting um, living like I mean um, promoting Uncle Sam's Curse. Uh -huh. So when I heard about it, um, it's a trip because I had just talked to him a few days before I left, maybe like a week ago. I'm telling you about the conversation they had that he said he had with Cube. That was like, you know, like a week later than I heard that he was diagnosed with, you know, with it. You know, and at first it was rumors going around like, oh, you know, he got that shit. And I was like, what you talking about? Like, that ain't real. That ain't real. You know, then it came out. Then I was like, huh? Like just devastated, like full blown AIDS. I was crushed. Did you go see him in the hospital? Oh yeah. Okay. It was so such a damn madhouse. I, I can and 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 I always wanted to remember. I, it's funny that a scene in the movie is a trip. The scene in the movie, like how Ren couldn't go in there. He wanted to like Cube couldn't go in there. I couldn't go in there because I wanted to remember me and him at the mixing board smoking weed. I didn't want to see him in the bed with shit Tube, all up in tubes it. and everything. Yeah, I want my last memory was just what I told you. Me and him sitting at my mixing board at the Edge Recording Studio in Inglewood, California, smoking weed, talking shit. That's okay. my last memory of him. <laughs> and that's how I wanted to remember him. I was like, she, because Tamika came and she was like, well, you can go in there, but you know, he just laid up in there. I don't want to see him with no tubes eating up. He can't talk. I don't want to see him. Okay. He in a coma? Like, I don't want to see the, the last vision of my friend. Okay. <laughs> I interviewed Lil Easy. Mm hmm. Yeah. He's his son. He couldn't get completely into it, right? But he felt that Easy didn't really die of AIDS, right? Because nobody around Easy had AIDS, right? Exactly. Not his pregnant wife Tamika, right? Not the baby, not none of the baby mama, not not any of the you know. The and, girls. and Tamika even was saying how you know Easy would just leave for you know. <laughs> 12, 13 hours right. at a time, and she right. just wouldn't ask questions, and right. that's just how their relationship was. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I'm sure Easy maintained a lot of girls. Absolutely. Even yeah. after Tamika and so forth. Absolutely. And none of them have came up. None of them have as, said, Easy E gave me AIDS. Exactly. I'm suing, um, you know. There's a state. You're right. You see what and I'm which saying? Which would make sense. Which would make perfect sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, one of the things that was interesting in the movie that I didn't actually know about was Easy had to downgrade his house. No, nah, I, I don't. I, I don't you don't know about don't, that? Don't quote me on that. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you said that, that, but you saw the movie. Yeah, I seen the movie. Yeah. He was living in the big mansion, and then suddenly right. they, they had him as a middle class shit. Right, exactly. Is that true? I, you, I, you never, I never saw that. You never went to his house, like in the later in the later times? No, nah, I mean I never saw that. I never seen him, and he never gave me no indication that he downgraded houses. Okay. So I can't say it either or. I mean, okay. The house I went to was a big, beautiful house, and yeah. he didn't say anything like, "Oh man, it's all bad. I got to downgrade a house." He never said it to me. He, must have been a secret. I mean, maybe she only knew. Maybe Tamika only knew. I don't know. I mean, because that's the only person they talked to about that part. Of, but so I don't, I don't remember them downgrading okay. houses, you know. So. Do you think that what Little Easy said was true? Well, it, it, it's, it's been a question that's been swirling around our camp for the longest. Because what we can't understand is how rapid it happened, like how quick it happened. Yeah. Like it went from this to being full blown, like. It's, you know, we look at look at Magic Johnson. Okay, you went from yeah. having HIV to you're still living 40 years later. Like, I don't understand it. I'm, I'm confused. Yeah. And that could cause some question marks, for real. So. Yeah, well, I, I spoke to Bone Thugs, and they mm -hmm. said that they, they knew people who, who had AIDS and died of AIDS. And it's just ironic because, you know, I know people can live with HIV for years and look normal and look healthy, but, but when you're about to die from AIDS, full-blown AIDS, you're gonna look like you're gonna die from AIDS. I've seen people that die from AIDS and they look like they have AIDS. Easy didn't look like that at all. My dad told me that. My dad told me, my dad, rest in peace, he told me, he said, look, he said, I don't know, he said, but I know when you're dealing with people in big business and Eric was a young, powerful dude, 
I wouldn't count out foul play. He told me that. He woke me up one morning, like 5 o'clock in the morning. was like, I don't understand what happened to Eric. It doesn't make any sense. You know, I've never, I, I've been around AIDS. I've been in the music business for 30 years. Hmm. I've never seen nobody die that quick of AIDS. This doesn't make any sense. He said, yeah. but when you're talking about big business with the people that we've dealt with all our whole career, you can't, you can't rule out foul play. It's many of people have told me that, you know. I, do I have proof? No. Do I feel a certain way about it? Yes, I do. Okay. That's my honest thing. Glad I feel a certain way about it. Like everybody else, it is a question mark. Like, how did that happen? Yeah, it's crazy. You know? Then it was like, okay, if you knew he had full-blown AIDS, why are you cutting on him? Why are you, why are you he operating on him? And it's like, that's a death sentence to me. I heard from medical people, like, like well, yeah. okay, he don't have nothing to fight back from an operation. He's most likely going to die. Yeah. Oh, so he had an operation and everything. Yeah, she she Tamika was saying something about he had they had to operate on him is like and it's a fifty fifty chance he might not make it out and to me that's when it all went bad. Okay. You know. <clears throat> I remember when I interviewed Lil Easy. Mm-hmm. Like we we were in the hood. Right. Like I, yeah. I, I remember we were outside right. doing the interview mm-hmm. and someone handed him a pistol. Right, like at right. The, before the interview started off exactly. camera, mm-hmm. and the whole interview, he's looking over his shoulder. Of course, yeah. And I, I think it may have been at his grandparents' house. Yeah, at, at, am uh, I right? Easy's mom's. Yeah. Easy's mom's house. I, I think so. Yeah, it was a, it was a long time ago. We're talking yeah. like ten years ago. Right. My question was, how does Easy E's son, with the the amount of money that Ruthless has made, and right? and continues to make to this true, day true. be living in such a such an environment right. where, where you're literally scared to get murdered by going outside your house <laughs> right well i think i think um and, and i can't totally answer that question because i don't know what the situation is between him and his stepmom which she won the whole thing and everything um or why that even exists like that why would you because the Eric that I know, he would never have his children in harm's way to no degree. Right. That's the Eric I know. You know, because one thing, me and Easy was riding one night, and uh, he never really slept. And I was like, man, you know, why? He, he said, he said, I said, why you hustle so hard? You already rich. You know, you can have Rolls Royces, you get mansions and all. He said, man, I got kids I got to take care of, man. I don't want them to want for nothing like me. I don't want them to be out there on the streets like I had to do. But I, and that's what he told me. I was like, oh, I perfectly understand why your grind is like that then. Yeah. Because he didn't have to. He was like, man, but I got kids, and I don't never want them to be exposed to nothing I went through. Yeah. So that, what you're telling me right now, is very, very disrespectful to who he was as a man. For his own son to have to be in the hood. and You know, we understand about, like, our parents, you know, they want to, you know, People that, you know, like my grandmother, you know, she lived on 125th Street in Lenox in Harlem and never wanted to move up until she died. She could have been moved all kind of places. You know what I mean? But old people are like that. They want, they bought their house when things were good and they're there. But children, they grow, they do things, they move on. And and that's how Eric was. He didn't want his kids to be exposed to nothing Compton-ish. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, because that's not what he hustled hard for. If, if he hustled and he want, and he saw the world, he wanted his kids to see the world. That's what he, and that's terrible, man. That, that's terrible for him to even be exposed to that. Yeah. You know, if someone owns his estate and making millions and millions of dollars, it's terrible, man. So. You know? That's not what that man stood for, man. So from, from what I heard, and I'm not sure if this is 100% true or not, was that he essentially signed over everything to Tamika. Yeah. Is that true. accurate? Yeah. Because Tamika controls the estate right now. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So ultimately it became up to her whether she wanted to help support Easy's kids Absolutely. Or not. Lady told me out her mouth, she's not taking care of baby mamas until the kids get 18 and they'll get their money. That's what she told me out of her mouth. I couldn't understand it. I was shocked. I was floored because I talked to the man. The man told me how he felt about his children. Hmm. But once to me. Not a rumor. Yeah. He, how he felt they shouldn't want for nothing. That's why I hustle this hard. Yeah. I don't hustle hard to pop bottles and drive big cars. I hustle hard for them to do to not have to do what the fuck I did. So I don't get it. I'm confused. At the time that I they interviewed Lil Easy, he was an adult. Exactly. So so this is even after that's what, my, whatever whatever that's my inheritance point. or whatever else he was supposed to get, he right. was still in the hood. 
That's my still point. risking his life with a pistol on him. Like I, I was nervous doing the interview. I'll, I'll keep it one hundred. I'm like, but that's my I, point. I didn't have a gun. That man like, didn't work for that. I mean? that. That's my point. That man didn't work for that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. like I said, no disrespect. Everybody who wants to do what they want to do, whatever they inherit or whatever they get, that's on them. You know what I'm saying? That's no disrespect to her. Whatever decision she made, she made it because she made it. But my point is, is that I'm telling you what the man was about. Yeah. You know what I mean? He wasn't about that. So if if I'm with a lady right now and, and I pass on and I say, my priority is my children, she better have my priority in order. Yeah. And that can't be healthy for her future. Yeah. Just karma alone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. At what point, from your point of view, right? being at Ruthless and being close to Easy, mm -hmm. did Easy start being at odds with Jerry Heller? Uh, from my point of view, it was when he just felt like he was out of control. Like he didn't, you know, he didn't know what, where anything was going. Okay. You know what I mean? Like he didn't know why everybody was so unhappy. He didn't know why, you know, and until he discovered something, you know, that's when he kind of like started separating himself, I believe. I believe when he started, um, really everybody around him stopped, started being really unhappy, then he started questioning what Jerry was doing. Okay. Because everybody, we weren't, like, you know, later later on, like after just a few people stayed, the rent, Ren, Yella, us, cocaine, and we really weren't happy with how Jerry was doing stuff. Okay. To be honest with you. You know, we liked him. We thanked him. But like I said earlier, I just think we should let the GM go. Okay. You know what I mean? I just think we should have. Because we started being at too too much at odds with him. You know, okay. it just wasn't like it was in the beginning anymore. And, and and I think Easy realized that and it took a it took a toll on him. It's like things are going, but they're not going like I thought. We're too far advanced to not be for people to be bad, or people not be happy. Okay. You know what I mean? So you remember when Jerry got fired? Yeah, I, I remember leading up to it. I don't really know the physical moment, but I remember leading up to it. Okay. It was easy telling you I'm going to fire Jerry? Oh, yeah, definitely. For sure. Which yeah. was a big move for him, because Jerry, right. Jerry got him his first deal. Yeah, he started replacing people. He started, different people started coming in. It was coming. Okay. Did you talk to Jerry after he was let go? No, I didn't. I didn't ever because I think I think it's funny because when their relationship started getting really weird, Eric was like, he's going to do it. But he didn't never really say when or what, you know, and then it's kind of like we just didn't see Jerry no more. OK, no, I mean, it's like we just didn't see him no more. We didn't talk to him. We didn't, you know, and then this, then he got sick, you know, easy got sick and then he died mm -hmm. fairly quickly. Right. Uh, how did you feel when you got the news that Easy died? I, I, you know, at first I didn't believe it was unreal. You know, I think we heard it on the radio. I think we just got in from somewhere. We had a show somewhere, Atlanta or something. I think it was in Atlanta or something. We just got in and was like, man, is this real? Is this real? Like, is this really, really real? You know, and it just was like, it seemed like the world stopped, you know, for a split second. It was unreal, man. Like, I was, I couldn't believe that. You know, so quick because for a while we did because like we we knew about the the HIV thing. We was like, okay, well, shoot, he got money like magic. He should live. You know what I mean? We thinking like that. Like, and then I think the last thing I remember, I went to the hospital. He he had just had the operation, and then we left out of town, and then we came back. We was hearing like easy dead, and you know, the phones phones start blowing up. Everybody start you know that kind of thing. But it was like it was like the world stopped, man. It's crazy. I couldn't believe that, man. I mean, my, my, you know, I tell you how collectively me and my crew felt. We felt like, man, this lights out for us, our career, you know, because our whole career we based on, we based it on someone having our back with what we wanted to say, you know. Mm -hmm. And for seven years, you know, we honored our whole contract, you know. Yeah. We could do what the fuck we wanted to do, and now we got to deal with. If if it was a problem at a big Record company, Easy will go up there. I'm gonna fix this shit. Come on, meet me right here. He was like our big brother in our career. So then we looking at, okay, we got kids, our livelihood, everything is. Who do we who do we trust? Who we don't, you know, you know who we talk to? Yeah, you know. I, 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 and then it was swirling around like we we knew that it was coming because 
different people was coming to the studio, Tamika, people that was representing the company at the time, new people, uh, try to meet us and stuff, and we like, okay, all right, you know. Then when it happened and they called us all in to have a meeting, it was like, this is how it's gonna happen, and this and that, that, and, 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 and the um, label is gonna be taken over by this until the state works out, and we was like, man, we don't talk to nobody but Easy, Easy gone, you know. So when we first heard it, we was like, all of that stuff was like the world stop for us, man. Yeah. You know, for me personally, like he was my guy. I didn't. It, it's funny, like being a producer, and a lot of people probably don't know that I produced a lot of stuff back then because I only produced for Ruthless. Hmm. You know, only produce. I was developing artists for uh, uh, the, the the groups that I did produce: Above the Law, Cocaine, Him. You know, um, HWA. You know, Kid Frost. All of us. You know, that was my. That, that fed my children, man. That fed my, you know, that fed my family, basically. Okay. You know? Yeah. Easy died. Bone Thugs was still going strong yeah. on Ruthless. And they were new. You know, got to realize they, they were, Bone they Thugs were new. was new. Was new, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they dropped Crossroads on, right. on Ruthless, which was, mm -hmm. a, you know, right. their, their biggest song. Exactly. Um, but it seemed like after that, the label was kind of done. Yeah, it was done. Yeah, we left. We left. We exited immediately. It might have worked if we would have stayed. We oh, left. really? Yeah, because I think that, I think you needed someone there that had Easy's vision. And there was no, no one there had it. You know, there Bone was. wasn't Easy's vision. Bone didn't have Easy vision. Like, you know, Bone's a great, phenomenal group, but Easy was the vision of that label. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have withstood without someone having a vision like Eric, you know. Yeah. It wouldn't have, you know, and, 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 and and that's the thing about Ruthless. Ruthless was his vision, you know. Like, it, it, it was like when people come in and they start talking to you from more of a corporate, creative level, you don't understand it at Ruthless Records, you know. Right. You only understand, like, a gangster coming in and saying, man, do that shit. <laughs> you might as well do that. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how he was. So he was very honest and he says, I don't write that way. I don't know how. So Drake was just kind of showing him how to take his ideas and turn them into a story and to make that story come back around. He basically was like, like, let me know. I know who you is. I know we got a lot of the same people, man, but we ain't, we ain't dead, nigga, basically. And I, my, I was like on a defense. 